I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire, the ring of fire, the ring of fire. Walk the Line, released in 2005 and is directed by James Mangold, who's directed a lot of great films like Kate and Leopold, Girl Interrupted, 310 to Yuma, and a couple of Marvel Comics pictures called The Wolverine and Logan. Plus, his name reminds me of that SNL Chris Kattan character called Mango. Hello, I'm James Mangold! <laughs> And this film stars Joaquin Phoenix, Reese Witherspoon, and Robert Patrick. Before The Matrix made it cool in the 90s to wear all black, the first person to do it was actually Johnny Cash. And Walk the Line tells the story of Johnny Cash's start from beginning with his music career all the way up until he marries the love of his life, June Carter. This film got a couple of Oscar nominations in there, Joaquin Phoenix for Best Actor and Reese Witherspoon for Best Actress, which she won, by the way. It's an absolute crime that Joaquin did not win it, though. But was that the year that Philip Seymour Hoffman won for Pote, I, I think it was. Yeah, he was pretty screwed. Plus, the year before that, Jamie Foxx won Best Actor for playing the role of Ray Charles. So the Academy is not going to give the award of Best Actor to someone playing the same type of person back-to-back -back years, right? Even though it's an absolute crime. But we also had Heath Ledger in Brokeback Mountain, so... Yeah, Joaquin was pretty screwed that year. But I have been aching to watch this movie again, so when it came up on the random generator, I was super happy. Just, I, I adore this movie. Because in typical fashion, I had never heard of Johnny Cash or his music before this movie. Because I'm an idiot. When I first started seeing the promotional material of this movie, I thought he was playing Elvis. That's how dumb I am. But this film is just another example of how Joaquin Phoenix is one of the best actors working today. His dedication, his performance to every role that he is in, especially this one, is just outstanding. And I will say that I respect it when an actor makes the conscious decision, and probably the director too, makes the conscious decision to not do a straight up impersonation of the person that they're playing. Because when you compare Joaquin to Johnny Cash, they sound almost nothing alike. But instead of Phoenix putting out just like another standard, like Las Vegas street performer type impersonation, Nation, he gives a genuine interpretation of this character and of this person. He has a lot of the cadences that Johnny Cash used in a lot of his songs and a lot of his speaking voice, but the actual tonality of his voice is all Joaquin Phoenix. And I respect that because it comes off for me just as very genuine watching an actor perform a role. Don't try to impersonate the person, just incorporate your own personality into that role. And I think that's good advice. And actually this is a great example for anyone kind of starting their career in the world of acting. It's about implementing your yourself into the role, not just doing an impersonation. Unless you're on SNL, because then that's all what they do. And more kudos needs to go to Joaquin Phoenix. He did all of his own singing in this movie. They didn't do any weird tricks or kind of implement the actual Johnny Cash songs into his performance. No, this is all him. And there are some songs that he performs that I prefer the Joaquin Phoenix over Johnny Cash, I'll be honest. The Cocaine Blues. I prefer Joaquin Phoenix. He did not do his own guitar playing. That, that is pretty obvious. But I will commend the director and the cinematographer because the way that they shot him performing on stage, you almost never see the guitar actually being played. It's all really close shots of him. And they may do a couple of quick shots away showing that he is actually holding a guitar on stage. There are also a lot of shots where we see the back of Joaquin Phoenix on stage. So we get the impression that yes, he is actually playing the guitar. And you just totally forget that he's just holding the guitar and just doing that the whole time. They're all very, very intelligent and smart shots, and my thumbs are up for them. And then we have Reese Witherspoon, who won the Best Actress Award for her role as June Carter, who in real life, Johnny Cash was hailing as just a fallen angel, his own angel, his own personal angel, just to guide him through all the dark times in his life. She was one of America's sweethearts, and Reese Witherspoon captures that beautifully. Every time you see her on screen, you just smile and you think, gosh, you know, just, I wanna pinch your cheek. 
cheeks, you're adorable. And unlike the comparison of Johnny Cash and Joaquin Phoenix, when it comes to June Carter and Reese Witherspoon singing, I prefer Reese Witherspoon. I don't really like June Carter's voice. Sounds a lot better with the actress. But the main heart, the main core of this film is their relationship, their friendship, and their love for each other. Because this is a musician biopic, of course, we're gonna have some drugs and some addiction and depression mixed in here, which I'm happy that they don't shy away from here. They show the dark, dirty, gringy backstage life of Johnny Cash and his addiction. But you also see the backstage life of June Carter and all the criticism that she was getting because she was seen in a lot of conservative mindsets of being this nice, prim, and proper musician. But then when she gets divorced and then she goes on tour with all these other men, people start looking at her as, ooh, you're a scandalous. So seeing her trying to fight her attraction to this character Johnny Cash, and Johnny Cash just trying to, to cling to her even though he has a wife, he has a kid, he has a house, he has an entire life that he leaves behind when he goes on tour. But when you're in love with someone, you just can't help it. You just have to be with that person. And the way this movie presents presents every other character outside of these two, it presents them all as assholes. His parents are assholes. His wife is a total asshole. Even though there are plenty of times where she is valid in the criticism that she has towards him. But this movie paints all of these external characters in these dark, dim types of settings. So that whenever June Carter and Johnny Cash are together, the, the clouds part and the sun just beams on them. It's actually a very sweet love story when we get down to the core of it. This movie does suffer a little bit though with Ray coming out the year before and basically dealing with the same plot structure. Oh, you have a brother that died when you were young and that kind of shaped who you are today. And then you try to break into the music business, you get addicted to drugs, you find a wife that you cheat on. Just in this movie, the actual wedding of the person that you actually love happens at the end of the film. Which I will find myself, if I'm driving home and I'm listening to Johnny Cash, I just get the urge to just watch that last scene when they're both singing Jackson. Oh, I love that scene. And I listen to Johnny Cash a lot, so I watch that scene many times. But guys, in the end, Walk the Line is a great character study and we have great performances from Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon. They don't hide away from all the dark and bad things that happen in Johnny Cash's life. No, they present it all right here in front of you. And you make your own decisions about how you feel about Johnny Cash as a person. And you get a lot of great musical performances with this movie as well. So I'm gonna give Walk the Line four and a half out of five Blu-rays. I think I see blue. Looks glorious. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part in my videos where I pick which movie I'm gonna be watching next. And my next movie that I'm gonna be watching is a recommendation from one of my subscribers and one of my fans out there, Strange Harbors. You recommended Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Is it Strange Harbors or is it Strange Harbors? I'm gonna go with Harbors. You're gonna be Strange Harbors for me. Eternal Sunshine. Oh, what a depressing movie. But it's true. Good. I remember seeing this when I was in high school, so I hadn't lived life yet. So a lot of these things that happen, I wasn't really attaching myself to. But I did recognize that it was fantastic. Just a small little indie flick, and it's always great to see Jim Carrey in one of these dramatic roles. I'm so pumped to see it. Thank you very much, Strange Habers, for the recommendation. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, please leave your comment below this video, or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter. Leave your recommendation there. And if I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout out on the channel. So everyone, have you seen Walk the Line? What did you think about it? Or even better yet, what is your favorite Johnny Cash song, if you have one. Please comment below, let me know. And if you like what you saw here, if you like people talking about movies and reviewing movies, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2019. And as a reward for all of you, if we hit that mark, I will watch a film that I am terrified to watch again, Arachnophobia. And of course, I will record myself watching it because that's all the juicy parts. So everyone, I will see you next time with my review of Eternal Sunshine. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.